Good afternoon. This is Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me again for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, present global temperature trends and what we can expect in the coming weeks and months as NOAA is predicting an El Nino to start to develop and already what we see in the equatorial Pacific is a growing expanse of rising sea surface temperatures relative to average temperatures. Now this is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. So areas that you see in blue are below the climatological average. Usually these are 20 or 30 year averages. And areas that you see in yellow are above the climatological average. Just as a caveat, I'd like to add that because of human-caused global warming, these baseline averages and anomalies are already working on a baseline that is already warmer than normal relative to the early 20th century and mid 20th century. So, so, the, so the baseline average is already elevated relative to what we would have typ typically been used to during past decades. As you can see, it, so this is the equatorial Pacific zone and, and the eastern equatorial Pacific, if, as that warms up, the, there is an increasing chance of an El Nino type event to emerge. And as you can see, temperatures in the equatorial Pacific along the equator are ranging from about it's like two and a half to possibly three degrees Celsius above normal to around one to one half to two degrees Celsius above normal with a little cool pool interspersed. But for the most part, these sea surface temperatures are starting to heat up. And presently, NOAA is predicting uh, NOAA's Climate Predict Prediction Center is predicting a 65% likelihood of an El Nino event by Northern Hemisphere winter of 2018 to 2019. And as you can see through May, June, July, and August, the potential for El Nino is already starting to ramp up, even though we are presently in what is known as INSO neutral conditions. Now, as the ocean surface warms up, and if, if this prediction is correct, then what will tend to happen is global temperatures will tend to warm, warm up as well. And what this results in, it, due to increased atmospheric greenhouse gases combined with the El Nino effect, you tend to see new record global temperatures challenged. And uh, we are in, a, in uh, a, an El Nino neutral state right now, but it appears that this shift in, in temperature trend is already starting to have an impact. Now, early indicators are that June of 2018 was warmer than normal on a on a relatively significant basis. According to the Coper Copernicus Observatory, June of 2018 as a whole was the second hottest on record by a slim margin. Now, regions that were warmer than average, as we can see here, the equatorial Pacific overall was warmer than average, and that, as we mentioned before, does have an effect on global temperature. It is the hot side of natural variability. But overall also the United States and North America was considerably warmer than normal. A large section of central Antarctica was warmer than normal and associated ocean zones. Europe was warmer than normal. Much of Africa was warmer than normal. And there were very few locations around the globe that were cooler than normal on a significant basis and one region, central Siberia, was much warmer than normal adjacent to the Arctic Ocean. Now, 
These warmer than normal temperatures extended into early July and shifted a bit eastward for a while. And we note that temperatures hit the 90s in eastern Siberia over the past week, with one location in eastern Siberia above the Arctic Circle hitting, a, hitting 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, which is a very, very warm temperature for that region of the world for this time of the year. This is in the permafrost zone, and um, experiencing tempers like, temperatures like that, permafrost really can't last very long. So, in context, I'm going to show you a graph here of 12-month uh, anomaly global surface temperatures relative to 1981 to 2010. Now, that's a 30-year climate average that already included much warmer than normal global temperatures. So this baseline is already warmer than normal. And as you can see, temperatures since 2016 have been considerably warmer than average. And if we start to get into an El Nino period, this, this, this bump, because we, we, we saw two La Ninas during, during this downgrade period here, uh, this bump will tend to reassert, and we will tend to see the 2016 temperatures challenge. And 2016 was a, was a major record year for global climate. Now, overall, June of 2018, according to uh, the Copernicus climate measure, it's a European climate measure, was uh, the second warmest on record. And this was the second warmest June on record by a slim margin about 0.1 degrees Celsius. With El Nino on the way and with atmospheric CO2 levels in the range of 410 parts per million in the coming year to two year time period, we would expect 2016 averages to be challenged and we would expect to see potentials for new record heat in the coming year if NOAA's predicted El Nino does emerge. Well, thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. I will be chatting with you soon.